Injections are the most common medical procedures in healthcare. And recently, there has been an increasing and alarming number of preventable exposures to bloodborne infections, all attributed to unsafe injection practices. In August of 2002, the Oklahoma State Department of Health conducted an investigation and discovered a healthcare worker routinely reused needles and syringes during clinic sessions. The same needle and syringe were used to administer sedation medications to multiple patients. A total of 71 cases of hepatitis C and 31 cases of hepatitis B were detected. The healthcare worker was penalized with a fine of $99,000 and was deregistered from clinical practice. The clinic where these cases occurred was shut down. In New York City, the medical license of an anesthesiologist was revoked after an investigation revealed he violated appropriate infection control practices by reusing single-use syringes between patients and contaminated multiple-use medication vials. Nearly 4,500 patients were potentially exposed from 2003 to 2007. So far, six confirmed cases of chronic hepatitis C infections have been linked to this investigation. Finally, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention investigated serious breaches of infection control practices at an endoscopy center in southern Nevada in 2007. Healthcare providers at this clinic discarded used needles between patients, but reused syringes to draw up medications from single-use vials for use in multiple patients. A total of 63,000 patients were potentially exposed to hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV. This was the largest group of patients exposed to infections via unsafe injection in medical history. So far, 115 cases of hepatitis C have been confirmed in previously healthy patients who received care through this center. These cases are not isolated, and the number of reported cases of exposures through unsafe injections have risen exponentially over the years. But why is this happening? Well, before we answer that question, it's important to revisit what constitutes an injection. Injections are medical procedures. Most often, we think solely of intravenous or intramuscular injection of medications. But injection procedures also cover flushing a vascular catheter or port, spinal injections, access to amaya reservoirs, peritoneal or hemodialysis catheters, and infusion of diagnostic contrast media. Now that we know what constitutes an injection, let's explore the three main reasons why they're being performed in an unsafe manner throughout our healthcare system. First, many healthcare providers aren't aware of safe techniques to administer injections. I learned how to inject just by watching my preceptor do it. It looked clean to me, and my technique has never caused any problems. Healthcare providers may take shortcuts and pay little care to basic infection control principles. Hey, I don't have time to get new needles or syringes. I've got too many more important things to do. Plus, I obviously understand the risks involved with injections, because I've never had a problem in the past. Some providers erroneously believe that safe injection guidelines don't apply to them because they know their patients and their techniques have served them well in the past. I don't need any guidelines to tell me how to inject. My injections are safe and I've been doing this for 15 years and never had a problem. These weak excuses share a common thread. I've never had a problem in the past. This rationale doesn't stand up. Many of the transmissible infections, such as hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV, cause insidious and chronic infections that manifest over years. Additionally, patients don't always return to the same provider for further investigations or treatment. So these providers really can't defend the assertion that their unsafe techniques didn't cause problems. Injections are inherently unsafe. They need to be optimally prepared and administered according to safe injection guidelines. The responsibility is yours to do right. 
The patient trusts and depends on you.